presentation is by Dr. Martin Picard. Uh, Dr. Picard is uh, co-founder of the Breast International Group and scientific director uh, of the Institute Jules Bourdais in Brussels. The title of her presentation is Interim Overall Survival Analysis Affinity, a randomized multi-center double-blind placebo-controlled trial comparing chemotherapy plus trastuzumab plus pertuzumab versus chemotherapy plus trastuzumab plus placebo adjuvant therapy in patients with operable HER2 positive early breast cancer. Dr. Picard. Thank you, Dr. Ateaga. Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to present on behalf of my co-investigators the six-year results of the AFFINITY trial. So this slide shows our conflicts of interest. So let me provide you with some background. So the AFFINITY trial randomly allocated 4,805 women with node positive, high-risk node negative, HER2 positive, operable breast cancer to receive either pertuzumab or placebo added to standard adjuvant chemotherapy plus one year of trastuzumab. Radiotherapy and endocrine therapy, if indicated, were given after completion of adjuvant chemotherapy. The primary endpoint of this trial was invasive disease-free survival, excluding second non-breast primary cancers. Overall survival was one of the many uh, traditional secondary endpoints. There were five stratification factors, including nodal status, hormone receptor status, chemotherapy regimen, geographic region, and protocol version. Indeed, after recruitment of 3,655 women, a protocol amendment prohibited inclusion of patients with node negative disease. The primary analysis was performed after 381 events and a median follow-up of 45 months, and the results, as you know, have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and they show that pertuzumab significantly improves invasive disease-free survival with a hazard ratio of 0.81, a p-value of 0.04, but you can also see from the curves that the magnitude of the treatment effect is modest. However, it was more pronounced at that time in patients at high risk of relapse, such as node positive patients, and you see their outcome on the left with a hazard ratio of 0.77, and patients with hormone receptor negative disease with a hazard ratio of 0.76. And the absolute benefits there at three years were 1.8 and 1.6% respectively. So today I'm going to present uh, the second overall survival analysis of affinity. At the first analysis, there was no detectable treatment effect with regard to mortality. This is a pre-planned, time-driven analysis. The median follow-up now is 74 months. Please note the very stringent p-value of 0.0012 required for statistical significance at this point. There are now 272 deaths, which represent 42.5% of the 640 deaths needed for the definitive overall survival analysis. I'm also going uh, to show you interesting updated descriptive analysis of invasive disease-free survival and cardiac safety. We now have 508 patients with an invasive disease-free survival event. So here you see the curves pertaining to the second interim overall survival analysis with a 74 months median follow-up. And you can note the excellent 94% overall survival rates at six years of this population with a very aggressive breast cancer subtype. So 125 patients died in the pertuzumab group, 147 in the placebo group. The hazard ratio is 0.85. The p-value is not statistically significant. Here is the updated descriptive analysis at 74 months follow-up of uh, invasive disease-free survival. And you can see a hazard ratio of 0.76, translating into a 2.8% absolute improvement with pertuzumab at six years. 
please note that protuzumab reduces the risk of distant recurrences as well as local regional recurrences. The rate of CNS metastasis, contralateral invasive breast cancers, and death without prior events are not different between the two treatment groups. Now, the node positive cohort interestingly continues to derive clear benefit from the addition of protuzumab. The hazard ratio there is 0.72, and this translates into an estimated absolute improvement of 4.5% at six years favoring pertuzumab addition to the standard treatment. In contrast, no treatment effect is detected in the node negative population, as you can see on the right. Now, in the primary analysis, there was a suggestion of an enhanced benefit in patients with hormone receptor negative disease. As you can see from this graph, these patients still benefit from pertuzumab with a hazard ratio of 0.83. But interestingly, now the curves are diverging in the hormone receptor positive population, and there is a benefit there emerging very clearly with a hazard ratio of 0.73, translating into a 3% absolute improvement at six years. So this table essentially summarizes the clinical benefit of adjuvant dual HER2 blockade with chemotherapy. On the left, you see the uh, hazard ratios uh, with their 95% confidence intervals for the intent to treat population and the clinically relevant subgroups as uh, presented today and compared to what was presented two years ago. On the right, you see the six-year invasive disease-free survival rates for the protuzumab group and the placebo group, and the absolute uh, benefit with the 95% confidence interval. Now, these benefits have to be balanced, of course, against potential harm uh, coming from the use of protuzumab, but here the great news are that no new cardiac safety issues have emerged with 2.5 more years of follow-up. One additional primary cardiac event was reported in the protuzumab arm. One additional patient in each arm had a secondary cardiac event. What is important to remember is that the rate of the severe cardiac events is below 1% in the two groups. There were 18 cases in the protuzumab group, 8 in the placebo group. So, in conclusions, regarding the affinity second interim analysis of overall survival, we have seen fewer deaths in the protuzumab arm compared to the placebo arm. The difference of 0.9% uh, is not statistically significant, and further follow-up will be very important to determine whether there is a survival benefit associated with protuzumab administration in earlier to positive breast cancer, and a third interim overall survival analysis that is also time-driven is planned in 2.5 years from now. As far as the updated descriptive analysis of IDFS and safety are concerned, I think we can say that the clinical benefit of protuzumab in ER2 positive early breast cancer is strengthened in node positive patients. We have a hazard ratio of 0.72. The absolute difference is uh, estimated to be 4.5%, but no benefit can be claimed in the node negative population. Very importantly, after 74 months of follow-up, the benefit of protuzumab is seen regardless of hormone receptor status, and no new cardiac safety issues emerged at this interim analysis with an incidence of severe cardiac events below 1% in each arm. So let me thank um, all the people who worked really hard in this trial, the staff at the big headquarters, at the clinical trial supporting unit of my institute, the statisticians at Frontier, um, my co-investigators, the central pathology lab in Milan, the many members of the different trial committees and uh, our Roche colleagues. Thank you very much, and I am happy to take questions. Questions from the floor, please. Uh, Lynn Peterson with Trends in Medicine. I'm sorry, but when I look at those curves, they look so minimally different. I just came from ASH, where w when we're looking at, at curves, they just, they separate better. So what's the net clinical benefit considering you talked about cardiac side effects, but what about all the other side effects? I mean, 
are women really getting anything for this in, in net? Okay, so it's important to remember that we are talking here about a curative setting. So we really want to cure these women who are relatively young. As you know, the median age is 49. You are right to point out that there is another side effect which is increased when you give pertuzumab, and this is diarrhea. So grade three diarrhea occurs in 10% of patients with pertuzumab, but it is mainly seen during chemotherapy administration and it uh, resolves very rapidly after completion of chemotherapy. And I believe that women would not regard that as a barrier to want to get protuzumab and increase their chances of not relapsing, because a relapse means impossibility of curing the disease. And as we heard, it means the prescription of a lot of regimens that are uh, quite uh, toxic sometimes. So, I think the benefit that we see in the node positive population is an interesting benefit. Um, you may have heard about the ESMO magnitude of clinical benefit scale where we try to prioritize drugs according to their clinical value. In the curative setting, the benefit that we see here is considered of really significant clinical value these 4.5 percent, and you need to balance that against the small 0.8 percent risk of a severe cardiac event. And by the way, we have documented reversibility of these severe cardiac events already in 50 percent of patients, but we need to follow them longer to find out if they are all going to recover, and that might not be the okay. case, of course. We don't know. Okay, good. Any questions on the phone? Yeah. Okay. Well.